Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us in the second webinar in the Optimize Your Organization series. My name is Kirsten. I'm part of the team here at Premier Development Partners. Today, we are joined by Chris Schaefer, who is the service manager at KW Lang Mechanical, and he's going to be discussing comfort in the office in order to increase employee uh, productivity. Uh, one quick housekeeping note before we dive in, you can feel free to enter your question in the chat box anytime throughout the presentation. Uh, there will be time for Q&As at the end. However, you can feel free to enter your question whenever they pop up, and then uh, you can send it just to the group chat to everyone or directly to me if you prefer, and then I will present all of the questions to Chris at the end. So uh, without further ado, Chris, go ahead and take it away. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, again. Uh, my name is Chris Schaefer, and I am with KW Lang Mechanical Stovacek. Um, I've been in the service industry, just a little bit about me, uh, 37 years, and I've been with the Langs, uh, 23 of that. Uh, and today I want to kind of discuss preventive maintenance. Uh, I'd like to call it preventative maintenance, so we try to catch things before they happen. Um, Good chances stuff still happens, but uh, at least if you try to stay the head of the game, um, it's always a good thing. Also, I want to talk about comfort and in indoor air quality. Um, we have quite a bit to try to cover in a little bit of time. So I, I put together a quick little slideshow, I guess you could say. Um, and if you want, Kristen, uh, Kristen, go ahead and go to the next slide. All right, so I'm going to start off and just talk about what most applications have, and it's just a rooftop unit. A lot of the office buildings um, have rooftops, um, small, large, um, different size, but mainly um, this is the most popular unit. Um, if you look at the picture, it kind of has a cutaway of some of the components in there. Now, this is a package rooftop, so it does have heating and cooling. And we're going to be discussing, you know, what needs to be done and kind of short operations of each one. Also, if you notice on this unit, to the left of the picture, it looks like some hoods or little vents. That's actually the economizer section of this rooftop. And that'll come into play here. I'll explain some more of it as we go along. But you can see the compressor, the blower, the heating section um, and the components in there. And each one uh, operates uh, in a unique way. Uh, again, this is pretty common on most applications. Um, typically, you know, tonnage, cooling, and heating all vary. Uh, if you want to go ahead and hit the next slide. Uh, this is what's called a makeup air unit. It's a Cambridge unit. Um, uh, it was pointed out to me that this isn't exactly the type of unit uh, on some of your buildings. It was pointed out to me, but I, this is a good picture I could find. A makeup air unit, uh, the way it operates is it pulls in 100% of outside air and it either heats it or cools it or it just uses itself as ventilation. Now, a makeup air unit, um, you have several buildings that have those. Um, or I know like Overdrive, Our House, uh, Building Out Stow, Regency, and they're good components. They can heat a large space uh, instead of having multiple like tube heaters or unit heaters. Uh, it'll actually be able to condition a space uh, just off of one unit. Uh, square footage wise all again determines the size of the unit. Type of maintenance on this type of unit, if you look to the right on that hood, those are uh, washable filters. Um, mainly, you don't put a a replaceable filter in there because they're exposed to outdoor conditions. So a lot of times, you can just take those screens out and uh, wash them off. They do have a burner section uh, that would need maintained. It does have a blower belt that would need maintained. And again, uh, most of these functions are just uh, mainly ventilation and heating. Uh, they do make some that are for air conditioning also. Uh, let's see. We can go ahead and move to the next slide. Air rotation units. Um, I know you have buildings with these. These are actually in the warehouse or in 
the location, uh, they operate pretty much same principle, except they're reusing the air in the space. So we're not bringing in outside air, we're actually recirculating the air in the space. An air rotation unit are fairly large. Uh, you've probably seen them, I think Stripmatic has them, uh, different applications have them to where it's a larger unit sitting along a wall somewhere. Uh, very components to them. Uh, Typically, the units you guys have are just heat only. Uh, they do have some cooling options, but I don't think there's any out in any buildings that I can think of. Uh, again, a lot of maintenance required on uh, these also. They have uh, typically washable filters. Some uh, might not even have filters on them. They're just recirculating the air without any filtration. You can see at the bottom part, there's a blower unit. The blower unit uh, has two different types of fans. Um, they require some heavy maintenance. There's bearings, there's belts. Uh, the heat exchanger needs to be inspected. Uh, the blower, there's combustion blowers and venter motors on these units. And again, it's seasonal equipment, uh, which should be done uh, usually about this time of year in the fall. Uh, we can go ahead and go to the next slide. Mini splits, uh, typically these might be in most commonly now used in IT rooms instead of a computer unit or in some offices, uh, small offices or rooms where it's hard to get duct work to or just want uh, cooling or heating or both in a small room or a large room or conference rooms. A lot of these are just a split system. You got a condenser outside and then the wall unit or cassette inside. Maintenance on those is they have a washable filter on the head assembly, and then the outdoor unit usually needs a good cleaning, uh, usually in the, after the uh, dogwood flies in the summer months. Uh, if you want, go ahead, go to the next slide. Uh, server room unit, Stoltz, Lieberts, uh, these require a little bit more attention um, maintenance wise because of how critical the uh, area they're working in, usually your IT room. Uh, you don't want equipment to go down or overheat. Um, maintenance on these, typical there's a filter that gets replaced. It could be quarterly, could be every six months. There's a lot of components internal. Some have humidifiers. If they have a humidifier, the canister usually has to get replaced once a year. And with IT rooms and comfort, uh, it's mainly keeping the temperature and humidity within check. Uh, usually they don't want to get higher than 60% and they don't want to get drier than 25 or 30% because of static uh, buildup. So these are a little bit more critical. Uh, you have to pay more attention to these units. Uh, again, they're usually a air handler inside. The compressor could be inside or the compressor could be on the roof. Sometimes there's just a condensing unit on the roof. And those, again, would have to be close attention to, especially later summer months after the dog would make sure they stay clear, check the fans. Um, a lot of electrical components, they have reheats, so you have to check the reheats, and like I said, the humidifiers, if they have it, have to get a canister changed at least uh, once a year. All right, can we go next slide? Reason I have this up, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the buildings have what's called VAV boxes and reheat boxes. A good example of some of those is like overdrive. They have uh, large units and then they have zoning or VAV uh, systems inside. With these systems, you have different types of fan controls, I should say, at each zone. So let me back up a little bit here. So you have a rooftop that supplies the system and then each zone has a box. And some of the boxes have reheats in them. And some boxes have what's called fan powered boxes, which is um, usually on to the perimeter of the building. Either box needs to be looked at, looked at, at least once during the season. Um, if it's a system powered box, it, it has a heat strip in it. If it's a fan powered box, it has a fan motor and a heat strip in it. Either one, we have to get access to 
check the contactors, the elements, and the operation. A little bit more involved. It's um, like I said, it's another thing that you have to keep in mind when you have these that there is some preventive maintenance to these. A lot of times it's really just the fall time that we look at them, but there's quite a bit of operation to these. And again, we talk about comfort. So if you have a, um, an area along an outside wall that's using a reheat box that's not operating, uh, potential getting cold. And again, comfort controls, filters. There's filters on the fan power. I, I think if you look at the top left, uh, fan power boxes do have some filters in it. Um, but there's also filters on the rooftop itself. All right, uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, get into your boiler systems. Boilers and maintenance. A lot more critical uh, controls on a boiler. A lot of water, they've got low water cutoffs. You got burner operation, burner safeties. Uh, you actually have to pull the burners once a season, take a look into them. Sometimes you actually have to open the boiler up. Sometimes you have to remove the skin. And I apologize if I'm going kind of fast. I'm just trying to uh, cover some of the ground here. But a lot of people don't think much about the boiler. It just sits back in a mechanical room until uh, the heat goes out. Uh, and a lot of times when it does go out, it's hopefully nothing critical or serious to where we can't get you back up and running. And kind of on that note, uh, with the COVID now, uh, parts is not like it used to be. Uh, we've had to try to get parts for summer uh, equipment. People know cooling and turned into 90 plus days on getting something that we used to be able to get even overnight in a couple. So when things go down and if it's a major component, it could turn into weeks or even months to replace. And I say that mainly with the boilers, some of those boilers are unique uh, parts to themselves. So if something did go down, uh, best to know early than late. Uh, again, try to be preventive on any type of maintenance on these. Uh, next slide. Exhaust fans, simple, but still need maintained. A lot of uh, a lot of the new ones are called a direct drive. They don't actually have a belt. Uh, still, a lot of these systems out there that have belts and bearings that need attention. Uh, we need to pay attention to those. A lot of restrooms could be a kitchen hood, could be just standard ventilation. Uh, these are small. There's some larger units out there, but they they need addressed at least once a year. Um, Check the operation belts bearings. Uh, go ahead to the next slide. A little bit of what we come across when maintenance isn't kept up, or I should say not kept up, or they want to wait a few years in between. Um, this unit is actually not looked at for two years. And when we come back, it was actually a service call about poor cooling. As you can see on the bottom screen, or bottom picture, uh, that's what the coil looked like prior when we first got there. Uh, again, this was a poor cooling call. It was cooling, just wasn't keeping up. And you can see just by the, uh, I call it like a carpet, a lot of that's dogwood and dirt collects on the coil. And it can collect on the coil in months, you know, six months time. Let's go ahead to another screen. This is actually a split system residential style, but it was in a commercial application. And again, uh, this one, uh, I think this one was several, another one, it was a couple of years, it might have been more than that. But again, just how quick things can fill up with uh, cotton, wood and dirt. Go ahead to the next slide. Uh, this one, we're just actually starting to clean it up and just showing you the process. You can see the kind of the, his hand to the left, we just got a real easy spray going on it. Uh, we use a special cleaner on there to get those to lift out because a lot, uh, typically when you get those coils dirty, uh, it actually impacts into the coil. So you actually have to use some type of agent to get the foam to lift out. Uh, go ahead to the next slide. This is a mini split inside the, the head system. Um, it was in a server room. Again, they 
called out and said that uh, we hadn't been out there in probably four or five years, and they said the unit just quit cooling. Uh, we got there and took the cover off, and uh, it was uh, pretty built up with dirt, uh, mold. I don't know. Um, the drain pan had been dripping, and it just it ended up it was easier. I shouldn't say easier, but it was, we ended up just removing it off the wall and replacing the head assembly because there's just no way to really clean it. Again, and just preventive maintenance. Uh, we hadn't seen this after this person in probably about five years. Uh, go ahead to the next slide. This is an evaporator coil also. Um, again, the filters were gone. They actually were uh, got so plugged up, they sucked into the unit and fell down into the return air. Another application, you know, just so preventable. Um, we had to take and, you know, clean this coil off. It was very heavy. It was uh, like a greasy application, restaurant style. So that was uh, real fun to clean up. Uh, go ahead to the next slide. This is one where we had to take the coil out because uh, we couldn't clean it in the unit. Again, uh, so preventable, just you know, trying to stay ahead of the game. Uh, everybody likes comfort, and we find these on service calls. These are not found during the PM. Uh, these were just uh, examples of uh, waiting till it broke type of deal. Let's go to the next one. Uh, again, kind of a no-brainer. Builder on the right, I'm not sure what's wrong with it, but the one on the left looks really good. This was the application where they couldn't get to the one filter, so they replaced the one that they could get to, and they just always replaced the outer filter, um, which if you go back a few pictures, I think uh, that might have been that unit where the half the coil was clean, the other half was dirty. Now let's go ahead and go to the next slide. This is a evaporator pan. It collects the uh, condensation off the evaporator. Typically, when we come in and do maintenance, we flush the pans out uh, and we clear the drains. Now, that's you know in the spring or early summer that we do this. And a lot of times you're you're making condensate all summer long, and to get really slimy, it it would it would take a lot. It could happen before we get back out on our next PM, but this one hadn't been looked at in a couple of years and you can see it had some growth going on and uh, pretty slimy. Um, some applications we even put what's called pan tablets or pan socks in there and they actually uh, prevent some of this mold and slime and uh, also prevents uh, the drains from getting clogged, backing up and causing leaks. Uh, go ahead to the next slide please. Uh, this is just another example of drain pan uh, we discovered this uh, in the fall after uh, getting ready to start to heat up, but the drain pan was dry, but just all the deposits and what was left in it, all the byproducts, uh, we do clean that out, but it's just a lot of stuff that we try to do, you know, on the preventive maintenance side of things. Uh, go ahead, the next slide. More examples, just, you know, uh, how fast and how bad they can get. Uh, go ahead to the next slide. Um, again, blower belts maintenance on a rooftop. That one actually threw the belt. Uh, we were going back and replacing the belt, uh, just so you can see some of the components and things that are in operation up there. Uh, let's go ahead to the next slide. Heat exchanger, uh, burner section, rooftop. If you look at the like the upper part of the picture, you can see the heat exchanger on the Below the blower, it's the tube, and it's got the little dimples in it. That's the actual heat exchanger. Then where the gentleman's at is where the burner section is. And if you look at the bottom picture, that's kind of what he's looking at while it's still in the unit. Talking about preventive maintenance, this unit uh, probably ran a couple years um, getting wet, um, rusting out. It, it, Burners could have been off. Several causes to this. It, even in the summer months, when the air conditioning is running, that those tubes can fill with just water because they're exposed to hot and cold. And then when you fire up your 
heat, that water becomes uh, corrosive. And it can sit in the burners and it can sit uh, in the tubes. And again, looking at it yearly, you would catch that and uh, do whatever you need to do to try to prevent any more rusting or any uh, corrosion going on. It's a big repair, so it's something you want to try to prevent. Now, go ahead and next slide. This slide is the actual ends of some of the tubes, and as you can see, uh, they burned out. It's just over time, just the heat and uh, cool and heat and cool and the cycling of the unit actually stress the uh, tubing in the heat exchanger. And this one was, again, it was a fairly cold day, and they called and they said the unit wasn't running, and it was going off in what's called a rollout, which uh, the air from the blower was actually blowing back into those tubes and causing the flame to roll inside the unit, uh, I should say on the outside of the unit, but where all the components are, and they have safeties there, so it was going off on a safety. Again, we check this every year, and if you look on that tube to the left, you can almost see like little scrape marks. Um, typically, you might see what we do is we'll take a screwdriver and try to check the ends of those to see if they're getting soft. It looks like at one time that was checked, but uh, uh, it, it burned out probably whenever after, after the fact. But again, another example of things that we try to catch that are preventable. It does happen, but you want to try to catch it before uh, you need it when it's 30 or zero degrees outside. Now let's go ahead to the next slide. This slide, I just had uh, a picture of the rooftop kind of open and I have off to the right kind of what the economizer looks like when it's open. The reason I did that is I wanted to jump to, I know it's pushing time here, but indoor air quality and fresh air and how some of the rooftops uh, help with that. Typically, if you have an economizer, there's a minimum setting, and it's like a little louver door to the right that you can set to allow some fresh air to come in. And a lot of times people don't realize it, but there's always minimums. Uh, now with COVID, they've, a lot of manufacturers, customers are asking us to bring in more air, which we can do. We just have to watch how much more air because of uh, uh, if you're bringing in so much air, uh, the unit might not be able to condition what you're bringing in. But that's how that's done is through the economizer. Uh, again, there's minimums. You can, it's like an open window. You can crack it. You can open it wide up. Another nice thing within the unit within the economizer is if it's 55 degrees or cooler outside and you want air conditioning, uh, it won't bring on a mechanical cooling. It'll just open that louver up. And you can use that air from outside to cool the building. Um, and it's a nice option because if you can keep compressors off, your electric load is down and it's, uh, it's like free cooling. Uh, let's go to the next slide. I want to talk a little bit about filtration. This is HEPA filter numbers. Uh, typically, your units are not HEPA. They're using a MERV filter. Most rooftop systems have to be designed to use a HEPA filter. But if you do go into HEPA filter applications, I, I think there's some applications out there that have pre-filters in the rooftop, some of the Aons and then a HEPA filter after it. This is ways that they can try to help clean the air. A HEPA filter will pick up viruses and uh, other items in the air, and it's a good filter to use, but most rooftops cannot handle a HEPA because of the restriction of airflow. So we go to the highest rating we can go MERV-wise on a filter, and usually it's 8, 10, or 13 without restricting airflow. Um, let's go to the next slide. This is another example what a HEPA does. Um, you can see in some of the readings, uh, they use them in planes, pharmaceuticals, chemical, surgic surgical rooms. They're being more and more, becoming more and more popular in office and other applications. And uh, they're actually starting to put it where they actually have devices now that are big and remote. And they'll be in another picture where they're just putting these systems in a standalone or remote application in each office. 
Let's go ahead to the next slide. It's talking about indoor air quality kind of at the end of the session here is what's um, called a GPS system, uh, Global Plasma Solutions, and how it works. Um, I really, I mean, do a quick read on it. The, you know, it will kill viruses. How it works is it actually uses ionization to do that. And when it does, it's uh, like just a quick, fast term of it. It magnetizes or makes the whatever's in the air larger becomes a component that the filter can pick up. And it's a nice system. I, uh, there's UV lights. There's so many different options out there. Um, I like this option, and we can go to the next slide if you want. Um, more about it, this option, there's really not a lot of maintenance involved with it. Uh, we just pretty much, they have a little, uh, some have little antennas or little uh, wands that come off. You just got to make sure they stay clean. Pretty much, it's just an uh, electronic device that sits in your ductwork. And that, like I said, low maintenance <clears throat> does a lot. A UV light is very effective, but UV bulbs have to be replaced uh, once a year. And typically in a rooftop application, you could have two to four bulbs, and those bulbs can run anywhere between $100 to $200 a piece. So if you're doing that yearly, you can't beat the ionization units. Um, go ahead to the next slide. And this is just a little example of what I was saying about the portable HEPA filter. Again, everybody's concerned about indoor air quality. If you can't do good filtration with what you have, they do have portable units that you can plug in and uh, it just has a HEPA filter and this takes the air that's in the space and recirculates it, blows it back out using a, a premium HEPA filter. Uh, go ahead to the next slide. Yeah, that's the last slide, Chris. Oh, that's it. All right. So um, I know it's kind of quick. I wish I could have more. Uh, discussion, but if, I guess we can open it up for questions now, right? Yep, absolutely. We have a few questions here. Um, I know uh, we're running up on time, so if you have to jump off the call, no hard feelings. Um, but the first question is, does regular maintenance on rooftop units extend the life for property owners? It does. Uh, typical lifespan is 15 years. Um, if you think about that one picture where the condenser was all plugged up, that strains the uh, condenser or the compressor in the unit, and the unit actually runs hot. And with an electrical device, you don't want it running hot, so it breaks down the windings. And uh, it could take, it could take, it's hard to, you know, there's no set um, what it does, but it could take years out of a device. Um, and if you want to get 15 years, you want to stay on it. Uh, but yes, it does affect, and it also affects your energy costs. Um, I know typically you could lose 5% or more a year on efficiency if you let your units go without maintenance. So in five years, you got 25% or you lost 25% of what that unit can do. So again, you're paying, you're still running that thing at uh, normal energy costs, but you're only getting three quarters of what it's putting out. So yes, you definitely want to preventive maintenance will extend your life. Awesome. Thank you for that information. So the now there's two questions that sort of go together, so I'm going to combine them. And the so the first one is how long do preventative cleanings take? Uh, will it interrupt my business operations while you're doing the cleaning? And then the second one that goes with it is what is the typical cost of the service plan for these preventative cleanings? Will it interrupt? I would say, again, that kind of goes towards what type of application you have. Um, if you do have a system where you have units above the ceiling, like I was saying about the VAV um, constant or um, anything that has components above the ceiling, a lot of times we have to get access to those. Uh, we have buildings that we try to get into earlier or later, uh, so we're not above people in uh, cubicles or office spaces. And sometimes we just got to give them a heads up and work with them. If it's a rooftop application, uh, typically you won't even know we're there. Uh, we might walk around to check thermostats, but other than that, 
Uh, there's no downtime or no involvement with anybody inside. Air, some of the warehouse equipment, sometimes we have to be around where they're working. And typically it's not that big of a deal, but uh, we usually set that up. Uh, the other part of the question was cost. Correct. Cost, again, goes by what you have. It's it's not a hard figure. I mean, pretty much if it's a rooftop, you know, it could be anywhere. If we're just coming out two times a year, uh, tonnage wise, it probably could start out, you know, three hundred dollars on up per rooftop. If you got multiple rooftops, and when we get there, we can do it in a day. The cost per rooftop might come down. And it's really just the time and how much uh, components we have to take care of. Server rooms, you have, you know, you have a humidifier, canisters. Um, that typically, those would replace once a year, so that cost could be two to five hundred dollars a canister. Um, and it's time. If it's something that's in and out, like a mini split, the cost is down. Um, and again, with maintenance or preventive maintenance contracts, especially with us, you get priority service with that. So if you have a contract with us, uh, you will get uh, service quicker than if somebody's just cold calling, I should say, where they waited till it broke. Um, we service everybody, but uh, we do try to take care of anybody that has a contract with us, uh, give them priority. No, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. And then preventative maintenance definitely seems like it would be much cheaper than, you know, having to fix it or replace it when if something yes. goes wrong. It, so it it is. It, I mean, um, again, if we go out there and end up having to clean the coil and spend several hours out there, uh, a lot of times you end up, if you wait the five years until it breaks or whenever it breaks, the cost of us doing it on an emergency is usually more than if you would just had a contract. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to do one final question. Uh, someone asked, what is the most common application for a portable HEPA filter? Um, actually, we have we have them in all different types of applications. Most common I've seen is uh, right now we have them in some waiting areas for doctor's offices. We have them, uh, actually, we have them in some dental applications. And then uh, I'm trying to think. Seems like some big open common areas they have, uh, maybe a couple where people are actually back to work and where they cannot get the uh, better filtration off the rooftop. Seems like more and more people are getting them, even in smaller, smaller applications like just a one man in an office. Um, but uh, most common right now seems like we put a lot into like lobbies and waiting areas where people are coming or going into either a doctor's office or uh, surgical rooms. Okay, thank you. Um, so we are running a little over on time. Um, if any more questions pop up later for people, is it okay if they reach out and contact you? Oh, absolutely. Call me, email me. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to throw your email into the chat here. Um, and then, Chris, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to share your expertise with us. We really appreciate learning more about how you know HVAC can affect so many different aspects of the office. Yes, and I, I, you know, I was trying to keep it short, and it's hard. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, so thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And then um, I just want to remind you to be on the lookout for your email for the final uh, webinar is going to be happening next month in the Optimized Organization series. So thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you.